Hey pharmacist, today we're diving into something essential for anyone who uses an inhaler, a spacer. We're going to go through why they were created, what they do, and how to use them properly. Let's start by understanding how these devices evolved. Spacer devices first came on the scene to address a common issue with meter dose inhalers. It can be tricky for some people to inhale a medication properly, often resulting in medication depositing onto the throat rather than fully reaching the lungs. The earliest spacer devices, like open tube spacers, simply added a bit of distance between the inhaler and the mouth. This slowed down the particles, reducing effects like hoarsenessness or thrush caused by medication landing in the mouth. But they still required careful coordination between pressing the inhaler and breathing in. To address this, valve holding chambers were introduced. They have the benefits of a spacer and they hold the medication to give a little bit more time to inhale. Unlike the basic spacers, these chambers included a one-way valve, which allowed the user to exhale in the chamber without disrupting the medication inside. This way, users have more time to inhale the medication effectively and don't have to worry about what happens when they exhale into the spacer. What do spacers do? Spacers help to ensure that medicine reaches the lungs where it's needed and reduces the potential for side effects by limiting the amount of medication that ends up in the mouth and the throat. As a result, many respiratory guidelines recommend the use of these when using a puffer because it can help have better control of respiratory conditions like asthma or COPD. They're really useful for children and patients with poor dexterity or really anyone wanting to ensure that the medication gets to where it needs to go. How to use them. I have the arrow chamber here as an example and there are a few different versions, some with mouthpieces, some with masks, and like I said, different sizes depending on the size of the face. So this one in particular is designed for children between one to five. And I personally like it because it has what's called the flow view uh, inhalation indicator, which flaps back and forth as a child inhales and helps provide a visual assurance of correct use and medication delivery. So the straps are pretty forward. You shake the inhaler, remove the cap if you haven't done so already. Uh, insert the inhaler into the chamber, put the mask onto the child's face, make sure it has a good seal and it fits snugly. Then spray one puff of the medication into the chamber and um, then have the child breathe five to six times. You can watch the flap go back and forth and you'll see that the child is breathing in and out. Then remove the mask, wait about 30 to 60 seconds and then repeat again. Shake the inhaler, insert it into the chamber, press, and follow the steps before with breathing. Remember, patients should only use one puff in the device at a time. So if it's required to take two puffs, don't do this. Make sure that you do one puff, have the user or the child breathe in uh, five to six times, and then repeat again. Another important tip is to ensure that the inhaler that you're using is in fact compatible with the spacer for example, this one um, cannot be used with dry powder inhalers or nebulizers. In conclusion, there are many benefits to using these devices with an inhaler. No matter what kind of spacer device your patient uses, follow the general rules for using the inhaler as well as the cleaning instructions as well. For example, some spacers like this one can be used and placed in the dishwasher and some cannot. Lastly, encourage your patients to consider a spacer to ensure that they get the most benefit from their inhalers and enhance their overall respiratory health. If you're interested in learning more about the newer Aero Chamber to go, check out my video dedicated to this device and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye pharmacist.